Hi guys, I am here at Duke University in front of this beautiful chapel with the stained glass windows and of course the three organs inside which are uh, gorgeous and world famous for good reason. I played a recital last night on both the Brombau organ in the front chapel and a flantrop in the back. Uh, 350 programs were printed for the concert and they ran out. So here in the south it's unbelievable how much people appreciate good music and in the chapel you can find it. They have amazing recital series, amazing Bach cantata series and it's usually full, beautiful acoustics. Just walk in here to see the stained glass windows. It's as close as you get to a European cathedral as, as you get outside of New York City, uh, St. Thomas or or St. Patrick's Cathedrals are my favorite, but this chapel, they call it a chapel, but it's really a, a huge uh, neo-gothic church, and inside it's just so beautiful. I'm sure you want to hear a demo of the Flantrop or the Aeolian or the Brombau, and uh, I would do it, but uh, it's really hard to get some quiet time in the chapel with all the tourists and uh, uh, tours going on weddings so maybe sometime I could come back here with my gear uh, high stand and, and set it up to to do a proper organ demo but next to me I don't know if you see the building this building is the divinity school and they have a wonderful Richardson Fox in the chapel which is also a relatively big chapel with with nice acoustics and and uh, that organ is somehow overshadowed by these <laughs> overwhelmingly beautiful instruments in the chapel, but uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing instrument by its own merit. 16-foot principles and uh, a combination system, which only the Aeolian has in the chapel, so you have to have two assistants for the flantrop and only one assistant on the Brombaugh because it's so tiny. It's a bird nest gallery there, like the old organs. Anyway, so I'm going to play a little demo on the chapel organ at the Divinity School. And I hope you enjoy it. And they are lucky to have this wonderful Richardson Faux Opus 16 instrument. Um, uh, it's six. Uh, organs after Boston. They have built a wonderful 16-foot principle which is in a facade and I'm going to start with that. So here's the principle 16. has a really nice purring sound in the bass. Okay, the octave eight. together with the principle 16. Similar sound if you add the octave 4, remove the principal 16.
just a little bit lighter than with the Prince. Add the octave tool. There is no quint, which I think it's uh, it's too bad. Uh, but we have a quint on the swell. But on, I really like to have a quint on the Hauptwerk, when, especially when you have the 16 foot principle. But the mixture has the quint. <laughs> with the principal 16. There's a trumpet, so let's add the trumpet. It adds some extra brilliance to the sound. It's not so much louder from the trumpet, but it gets a little bit darker, it actually. Trumpet. So when I play Bach on organs with trumpets like this, I tend to not overuse it, especially for counterpoint. But if I want something uh, either, either a darker color or a more chordal homophonic texture, then I use the trumpet. And that gives the sound an extra darkness, but it kind of uh, obscures the counterpoint sometimes. But if you want, uh, s for example, uh, the D minor Toccata, the famous one, 565, um, it's, uh, it's useful to have the trumpet for passages where, where it's like uh, a violinistic passage. <laughs> helps the articulation, the differentiation in articulation without it. It's less interesting and less color. But anyway, moving on. I might be kicked out here because somebody's supposed to come and repair the Hammond organ downstairs. But since he didn't show up anyway, uh, let's do the Viol de Gamba on the Hauptwerk. A very mellow uh, sound is great for blending with other stops, more of a filler, but uh, this Doppelflut is definitely 
a lot more colorful than most Doppelflöters I have heard. Just gorgeous. Flöte 4, and as we expect from Richard Zafaux, this is going to be a superbly voiced four foot. Let's hear it. wasn't disappointed. Hear it with the gamba, usually it's a nice combination, even for counterpoint. Flöte four with the doppel flöte. Let's try them. Let's try the cornet first. It goes well with the double flute and the fl flute. Let's accompany it with the second principle. The second principle is on the swell, so it's unenclosed. It's, it lives in the facade, and I think the bottom is some kind of a gedeckt. Yeah, the bottom octave is just a gedeckt pipe. Let's hear the cornet. It's a really beautiful, happy cornet sound. Uh, trumpet by itself. With the cornet. Just two stops and it's beautiful and big. Um, Vox Humana by itself. You see, uh, I get a lot of requests on this channel to demonstrate the reeds by themselves, which I do. Uh, but as you can hear, the Vox Humana by itself doesn't give the same effect and pleasing sound as you would expect it to uh, do with other stops. In, in particular, the four-foot flute usually works best.
it gives kind of, it fills a void in the <laughs> Vox Humanus sound somehow. Again, by itself. Same thing with the flute. Now the Dutch like to use the Vox Humana kind of coloring all the eight foot stops on the on the manual which it resides on it. It's usually either the Oberwerk or the Hauptwerk and I really like to have the Vox Humana on, on an unenclosed division because it's, it's just a different sound and here it is on the Hauptwerk which is wonderful. You can use it with all the eight foot stops. Or just the octave. I like the others. Wonderful sound. Okay, so I think we finished all the stops on the grate. Uh, the pedal uh, has the usual Suba 16 octave 8. I wonder if it's the same octave 8 as on the grate. Yes. Octave 4, same octave, independent octave 4, and of course a sub bus is independent too. Trumpet might be the same trumpet as on the grate, let's try. It is, which is understandable, why not use it twice? Um, Unless you have pedal towers where you have all the space you want. And uh, Posana 16 is usually marvelous on a Richard Fox. Big resonator, fantastic speech. That's what you expect from a Richardson Fox and you get it all the time. Okay, moving on to the swell. The only unenclosed uh, rank is the principal eight. Uh, you want to have a wonderful speech to these pipes and when you enclose them in a swell box you usually lose it. Solitionel 8. Now there's no Celeste on this organ, but uh, there's a Tremulant, I guess it works like a Celeste. and when you close the box it's beautiful uh, perhaps uh, let's hear the doppelflöte and as a flute solo a 
that's nice. Okay, moving on. Uh, Gedakt 8. As you expect from Richards and Fox, Gedakts and flutes are just heaven. And the roll flute, always my favorite stop. Cute and Gedakt together. Not the best key to finish in. It's in some kind of a temperament, judging from Opus 16. I think it's Kellner, because they switched over to a slightly less unequal temperament in Arizona, I believe, which was uh, night art for the small city, and that's what they are doing now, Richard Fox, that is. But this is an earlier instrument, and Kalner was the standard for them at that time. So let's move on to whole flute eight. It's just gorgeous. Let's try with the Roar Flute, which takes second place. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the Viol 4 with the Roar Flute. That's just gorgeous. Waldflöte with the Gedakt. The Rohrflöte. Okay, now octave four. We haven't tried the principal chorus, just the principal eight. So let's switch over to this side, which are the principal ranks. Uh, principal eight and octave four. Sorry, I 
had the roar flute on, the vault flute on. Which was a nice sound, actually. Remove the vault flute. The quint. Yeah, that's nice to have a quint. I always like to have quints in the principal chorus. It adds the sound a sort of color a mixture would normally add, but without the shrillness. You get the interest in the principal course with, at, by adding the, the quint, and not the one, one and the third, but the two and two and the third. That's really important for an eight foot principal course. Sharf. Pedal trumpet. Now with the third, it becomes darker again. Actually not darker, but a little bit more uh, potent, more meaty, more grindy. And the dulcia and the third on this organ, we, in the context of the principal chorus of the swell, works miracles. Without pedal. Add the posaune without the trumpet. Now compare it with the great mixture plenum with the 16 foot principle. fantastic sound. Uh, I wanted to do some uh, combinations that I really like. Uh, the Vox Humana with the eight foot stops minus the octave eight. And uh, the Quint with the roar flute and Gedacht. Actually changed the Gedacht to the whole flute. And a little, it's great for a uh, uh, Bicinium you, you might find in Pachelbel.
voila, it beautifully blends and you can distinguish the voices. Uh, it gives uh, the organ yet an extra color. Um, yes, so this combination is the Dulcian, featuring the Dulcian 16 and the Gedakt 8, uh, a sort of a concertato accompaniment to the trumpet uh, of the great and the pedal is doing just continual and featuring the tenor range of the trumpet. Let's listen. <laughs> What did I do here? Yes, the corne, the happy corne, we will definitely want to hear it in this upper range, which is absolutely fabulous. But what do we accompany it with? Uh, let's try the oboe, Waldflöte, viol, Gedakt, and principal. Kind of a similar idea than the previous variation, but uh, now it's in the soprano. And uh, what is here? Yes, uh, this is a trio registration with the Vox Humana, all the eight foots, the oboe eight, and all the eight foots on the swell, and just the subbassin octave in the pedal. <laughs> Tutti, uh, just eight foot plenum first, with that the trumpet, just the posaune of both manuals, so here's the great.
What a wonderful instrument, isn't it?